Okay, I'm starting the recording. This is lecture 3.3. We're not going to finish it today. I, I don't think so. Uh, but I do want to get started on it so that you guys can get started on the homework for one, and then also so you can get started on those additional practice problems. I don't know if you were able to hear when I was saying this, but in both AP, well, AP don't distributes a very large portion of their curriculum to specifically acid-base equilibria, okay? And so there's like a whole section of just a, uh, of the AP book that is specifically for acid-base equilibria. And so there are over a hundred, and why well, not the Silverberg book, there's like 180 practice problems in the back of the book, specifically for the um, acid-base equilibria chapter. Um, ACE, I think, is a little less, but it still, there's a lot of different things that we can do here. We're not going to go super in-depth in this, in this lecture, but we will the next one, okay? So here, we, this is lecture 3.3, acid-base equilibrium. Okay? So, um... This first part should be mostly review. Um, you guys know there's different types of acids and bases? What, what types do you guys know about? Oh, okay, yes. There are strong and weak acids and bases. Um, what about like the types of strong and like, like what about the categories of acids? Yes, yes, Bronson Lowry is one of them. Did you guys go over any of the other ones? No. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> one third of this will be review. <laughs> um, okay, so acids and bases categories. <laughs> Acid base categories. The first one, um, and this is in order, the first one is going to be like the least number of acids and bases are associated with this first one. Then the second one will get a little bit more general. Then the third one will get even more general. Okay, so that's kind of how I organize these. The first one is called Arrhenius acids or bases. A R R H E N I O U S acids or acid base. Okay, and Arrhenius defined acids as something that increases the hydrogen ion concentration when dissolved in H two O. When dissolved in water. Okay. So an Arrhenius acid is something, it's defined as something that when dissolved in water increases the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, quick aside here, hydrogen ion concentration and hydronium ion concentration are essentially the same thing here. Do you guys know what the hydronium ion is? When I say, yes, H3O plus, okay? So this is the same thing as H3O plus, which is this, this is when water, this is when water has another proton on it, okay? Now, Arrhenius bases, okay, are a little bit different. It's something that increases the hydroxide ion concentration when dissolved in water, okay? So if you dissolve something in water and it increases the hydroxide ion concentration, that is an Ar Arrhenius base, okay? This right here is super specific and it only applies to a few acids and bases, okay? Compared to the other ones, all right? Pretty straightforward here. These are, are pretty easy to identify because if you just add water, like just hypothetical reaction add water to it and then see what the products are and if it H plus H3 or O minus then it's going to be one of those. Okay? It's either an Arrhenius acid or an Arrhenius base. The second one which you guys are already familiar with is the Bronsted-Lowry acid base. This one right here is uh, specific to ACE. They really like this one. 
Ace doesn't really care about Arrhenius acids, but AP does. Okay, and it's good to know that that they're you know different. Bronsted-Lowry acids are a little bit different. They're similar in a certain case, but they're a little bit different in that acids are anything that donate an H plus ion. Okay, or a pro. H plus is just a proton, so I'll say or protons. Okay, so if it donates a proton, then this is a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Okay, now Bronsted-Lowry acids could potentially also be Arrhenius acids. Okay, um, and maybe an Arrhenius acid could potentially be a Bronsted-Lowry acid. So there's a little bit of overlap here. Okay, and then bases actually are defined as uh, nothing to do with OH. In this case, it's actually a uh, acceptor of a proton. Except an H plus, okay? So a Bronsted-Lowry acid donates a proton and a Bronsted-Lowry base accepts a proton, okay? If a base is accepting a proton, is this um, a nucleophile or an electrophile? Colin? It's a, it's a, if it's accepting a proton, then it's a nucleophile because it's forming a bond there. All right, it's, it, it would be an electron-rich thing that is an accepting a proton. So yes, it would be a nucleophile. Okay. And then the last one, I'm just gonna say the last one is really weird, okay? This right here is, is a, this, this covers a wide range of things that would we, we would normally see as acids and bases. The last one is like, it basically takes everything into consideration and says, well, technically it's an acid. <laughs> so here we go. Um, the last one is called a Lewis acid or base. Okay. And now, Lewis acids and bases are incredibly, incredibly important to understand when it comes to organic chemistry, okay? Because Lewis acids and bases are specifically, so an acid is defined to be electron pair acceptors. Electron pair acceptors, okay? Which we define to be Electrophiles okay. and bases are electron pair donators or electron pair donors. Donators. Is donators a word? <laughs> yeah, yes. It is. What are donators? Donators. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, no, it would be... Electro-pair donor. donor. <laughs> we'll just say that, which is a nucleophile. Okay? This is why I've, I've, ex I've been trying to expose this to electrophiles and nucleophiles a little bit before this, because students, myself included, when I was a student, had a hard time, or tend to have a hard time identifying what a Lewis acid or a Lewis base is, okay? And so I'm hoping that this will kind of offset that, but... It's okay if it's still difficult. I'm not expecting you guys to be perfect at this, okay? Now, in some circumstances, um, just generically, there are certain things that can act as both an acid and a base, okay? They meet both of these requirements, or maybe in certain, cer in certain, certain circumstances, it'll donate an H+, plus, or maybe in other circumstances, it'll accept an H+, plus, okay? A substance, this is a, s a, a side, note, a substance that acts as both an acid and a base is described as amphoteric, A-M-P-H-O-T-E-R-I-C. Amphoteric. An amphoteric substance is one that acts as both an acid and a base. Okay. Good so far? Any questions? 
So we have three different acid types. We have um, an amphoteric substance, which is, you know, it acts as both an acid and a base. It depends on the situation that it's in. And um, that's, that's it, so far. Um, we've also tied in nucleophilicity and electrophilicity, or nucleophiles and electrophiles, into an acid-base definition that is Lewis acids and bases, okay? So I'm going to erase all of this now, if that's okay, okay? And we will get started into some more specific why we care about these three different acids and base definitions. So, in an acid-base reaction, there's four things that we need to be able to identify, okay? So four things to identify in an acid-base reaction. The first one, okay, the first thing you should do is determine the acid and the base. So those are, that's the first two things, okay? So one, determine the acid. The second one is to determine the base. Or you could determine the base first and then the acid, it doesn't matter. And then the other thing, okay, these are both the reactants. This will be on the reactant side. And then on the product side, I'm just going to draw this arrow to show that it is a reaction that we are looking at, okay? Yes, it could be a completely, like, it goes to completion reaction, or it could be an equilibrium, but, you know, that's kind of going there. Um, the next thing you need to do is determine the conjugate acid, sorry, conjugate base and then also determine the conjugate acid. Are you guys familiar with these terms? Okay, that's fine. I, I'm just trying to get a feel for <laughs> what we know, what we don't know. A conjugate base is basically what the acid becomes after the acid reacts, okay? So it's what's left of the acid on the, from the reactant side. And then a conjugate acid is what's left of the base. seems a little confusing because if the conjugate base is what's left of the acid and the conjugate acid is what's left of the base, okay? Now, it's, there's an easier way, I think, to remember this. The conjugate something, or the conjugate base is basically in the reverse reaction, what acts as the base, and the conjugate acid is in the reverse reaction, what acts as the acid, okay? So if this was equilibrium, it's, or it doesn't even matter, it's whatever the reverse reaction is, what acts as the base, that's the conjugate base. In the reverse reaction, what acts as the acid? That's the conjugate acid, okay? So that the, this is on the reactant side, and this is the product side, okay? So you're basically just determining which one's the acid and base on the reactant side, and which one's the acid or base on the product side. It, once you determine which one's the acid and base on the product side, slap the word conjugate in front of it, and you're good, okay? So we do have an example here just to practice this, because. I, I feel like it can get a little confusing, but if you keep a good inventory, if you are able to identify these, it should be relatively straightforward. So I want you to identify the um, acid base or the, and the conjugate acid base pair in each of these reactions. So identify the acid and base, A slash B, and the conjugate acid base pair in each reaction. Okay? So the first one is going to be a reaction between nit nitrite I actually don't know what that is called. That's not good. <laughs> HNO2 <laughs> plus H2O yields NO2 minus plus H3O plus, okay? And then the second reaction is going to be NH3, or ammonia, plus H2O yields 
NH4 plus, or ammonium, plus OH minus. So go ahead, label the acid base, acid in the base, and the conjugate acid and the conjugate base, and see what you get. Yeah, Abigail. This is not nitric acid. Nitrous. nitrous acid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I didn't hear you the first time. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> nitrous acid plus water, nitrite, and hydronium. Okay. And then we have ammonia plus water yields ammonium. Ammonia plus water yields ammonium. And. <laughs> When you're done with that, try to identify if this is an acid-base reaction for Bronsted-Lowry acids, Arrhenius acids, is this Lewis acid, Lewis base? You want to abbreviate acid with A and conjugate acid with CA, that's fine too. Okay, well, I was thinking of the band too. <laughs> All right, guys, let's um, let's identify the acid base and conjugate acid base pair here. In this first reaction, which one is the acid? Nitrous acid. Nitrous acid. That's right. The one with acid in its name is acid. <laughs> Mind blown. So this is the acid. So that means that water is the base, right? Because the acid is going to react with the base. That is always true. Okay? So acid base. And then the conjugate acid is what? Jake? I know it's two minus. The conjugate acid? The conjugate acid is what's left of the base. I wasn't trying to flip the script on you guys. I just said conjugate acid and went with it. Kathy, do you have an idea? It's uh, H3O plus That's right. This is hydronium. It's the conjugate acid. Okay. And NO2 minus would then be the conjugate base. Okay. Yes. So what's left of the acid is going to be the conjugate base. Right? So NO, NO, NO2 minus is what's left of the acid. So conjugate base. And then H3O plus is what's left of water. And so that would be the conjugate acid. The other way that you could do this is say, well, if we were reacting nitrite and hydronium to get these two things, which one's acting as the acid here? Hydronium, right? Did you guys uh, figure out what kind of acid-base reaction this was? Any ideas, Harry? Would these be both Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis? Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis? Um, is it an ammonia that you can Oh, you're looking at two. I was just thinking for just one. Oh. Arrhenius and Bronsky water. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, because 
it's increasing hydronium concentration here, okay? And then bronchial already acids donate hydrogens, and so this is donating a hydrogen to H2O, okay? Very good. Um, now what about here? What's the acid in the second equation? Dane? It's water. It is water. What about ammonia? What is that? Owen? The base. Very good. Okay. And then what's the conjugate acid on this side? Owen? NH4. NH4. Good. And what is hydroxide then? The conjugate base. Okay. Now, um, we call these, uh, we, we, we haven't really answered the question yet. It says identify the acid base and conjugate acid base pair. And so usually we associate the conjugate base with the acid and the conjugate acid with the base. And we just do that simply by drawing lines between them. So we draw an, a line between the acid and the conjugate base, okay, to show that that's, a, that's the ba acid and conjugate base pair. And then between the base, and the conjugate acid, okay? So that would be identifying those things there. And then the NH3, we would draw a line between the NH4 there, because that is the base to conjugate acid pair, and then water all the way to OH there, that's great. Okay, so that would be the good answer there. Um, and yes, Harry, you are correct. This second one is a Lewis acid base reaction, okay? Because um, electron pair acceptors and electron pair donors. This is an electron pair donor. It's a nucleophile and electron pair acceptor. Well, I don't know. Yeah. So, um, this is the answer here. Okay. What was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. Cool. Any questions on how to identify it? Yeah, Abigail? Wait, so why is this next one from um, Lewis? So NH3 has a lone pair on it, and H2O is donating a hydrogen. This lone pair is attacking the hydrogen. This is going back there, and so you're forming NH4. Plus, okay, so this, this right here is showing an ammonia, which is the um, Lewis base, an electron pair donor to uh, bond with this hydrogen. This hydrogen would be the um, Lewis acid. Okay. So there we go. Hydronium or hydroxonium. Yeah, so H3O, oh, I remember what I was gonna say. This right here is a great example showing how water is an amphoteric substance, okay? Water in the first reaction is acting as a base, and water in the second reaction is acting as an acid. Okay? So water is amphoteric. Question? Why is it not Bronson Lowry? It is. Oh, okay. okay. If it's Lewis acid base, it's probably like it can also be Bronson Lowry and it also could be Arrhenius. There's overlap between all three, but sometimes there's not overlap. Yeah. Good 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 clarification there. Because we are increasing the concentration of OH minus here. Yeah, Abigail? Um, is, is the name of the um, so the O cross is how you spell that person's name. I don't, if you don't want to write it. No, no, I just mean, like, is it a test like, what is this? Do you know Oh, they wouldn't take it off, I don't think. That would be a really niche thing to do. Yeah. What language is it? I don't know. Danish? Okay, cool. Danish. <laughs> I guess. Um, all right, let's talk about strengths then of acids and bases. This is another important thing to, to realize. This is going to be part B. The strength of an acid and base, you guys already know this, is determined by how well they dissociate in water. Okay? If they dissociate completely, it's a not an equilibrium reaction, and that is called a strong acid or a strong base, depending on if it's an acid or a base. 
Okay. A strong acid or base, just to write it down, a strong acid or base dissociates completely in water. What does that mean? What does dissociates completely in water mean? Jacob? All of it separates out into its ions. It completely ionizes. Yes, very good. It separates into its ions completely. There is no hydrochloric acid left. It's all hydro hydronium ions and chloride ions. Okay, very good. Weak acids and bases, similarly, do not dissociate completely. Okay. Hence why this thing right here, hence why acids and bases is in the equilibrium chapter. Okay? Weak acid, acids and bases do not dissociate completely, so there's an equilibrium reaction between the actual acid and its dissociation into its ions. Okay? So that right there is why this is here, and this opens up a whole new avenue for equilibrium, which we're going to get into. The first thing I want to talk about for this avenue is the auto-ionization of water. Do you guys know about this? What do you suppose auto-ionization means? Jake? It ionizes on its own. It ionizes on its own. Very good. Okay. So we have H2O plus H2O in equilibrium with H3O plus plus OH minus. Okay, this is the balanced reaction. Here, water is acting as a acid and a base to form its conjugate acid and conjugate base. Okay, and this reaction does happen on its own. Okay, so what is the KC expression for this? Anyone? <laughs> ben? Uh, the concentration of H3O um, times the concentration of OH over the concentration of H2O and the concentration of H2O. Very good. I'll just say the concentration of H2O squared. Oh. Okay. Because it's the same thing. Twice. Okay. So this is true. Um, I didn't include states here. If I did, it would be liquid, liquid, and then both of these would be aqueous. Okay. And so that means we wouldn't actually include water, but here's another good reason to why. Okay, the hydronium ion and hydroxide ion concentrations are super small in this reaction. Okay, they're very, very tiny. And the water concentration essentially remains constant. Okay, because the hydronium ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration are so small, the equilibrium concentrations to the initial concentrations of water, yes, you can actually calculate a concentration for water. It's super, super constant for water concentration and super small for the hydroxide and hydronium ion concentration. So what we can do is we can basically just say that Kc for this reaction is the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide, okay? And this right here is actually, this is equal to a very specific K value that we call KW, okay? KW, because this is the ionization uh, constant for water. That's what the W stands for. Question, Kathy? Wasn't it like seven times 10 to the 14? It's not seven times 10 to the 14, it's just 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Yeah, very, very good memory. Awesome. Yes, the KW for water is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14 um, mole squared decimeter to the negative 6. Okay, so that is the KW for water. That is a constant if it's at 25 degrees Celsius, right? Because if you change the temperature of something, the K value for that reaction will change, all right? So this is at 25 degrees Celsius, um, and there you go, okay? So the KW, this is very, very important for specifically acid stuff, okay? It relates to a lot of interesting things there. This nifty little rearrangement right here, getting rid of the H2O squared, 
this nifty little rearrangement here allows us to calculate the concentration of H3O plus and OH minus. But there's something else that we can do before we even get go there. Okay? Do you see how this is all a one to one to one to one ratio? That means that at equilibrium, the concentration at equilibrium, the concentration of H3O plus is going to be equal to the concentration of OH minus. So they're the same. And so what you could do is instead of saying the Kw equals the hydronium ion concentration times the hydroxide concentration, you could just say that Kw equals the hydronium ion concentration squared. Okay? And that means, since we know what Kw is, since we know what Kw is, just um, 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14, you can actually calculate the pH. Or, I keep ruining things. It's fine. You can calculate the hydronium ion concentration by taking the square root of both sides. So the hydronium ion concentration, the H3O plus concentration, is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 7 moles over decimeters cubed. Okay. Since we took the square root of our Kw, which, which units were moles squared over decimeters to the sixth, the square root of that is moles over decimeters cubed. So this works out. This is a good and acceptable value for the hydronium concentration of water, um, the ionization water of water um, at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Enter stage left pH. Okay. This, is what, this is what I was building up to. Um, Do you guys remember, did I mention what the small p basically stands for? Like we have pH, pOH, pKa, P, just, never mind. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just ruining everything, it's fine. So pH, um, you guys know about pH, right? Yeah. It's a measure of acidity, okay? And the lower the number is, the, the greater the acidity, very good. If you ever see in chemistry class a lowercase p, lowercase p means negative log base 10 of whatever comes after the p. Okay. So this right here, pH specifically means, if we, if we decode it, it means negative log base 10 of the hydro, of, of hydrogen ion concentration. Okay. pH is the negative log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now remember, hydrogen ion concentration, hydronium ion concentration are the same thing. Okay, so this is pH, all right? And so we can calculate the pH of water if we know the hydronium ion concentration, okay? So the pH of water equals the negative log base 10 of 1.00 times 10 to the negative 7, okay? Which is what? How are you guys on logarithmic properties and calculations? Good. I personally, yes, I personally yes. love logarithm, logarithmic properties and the like. I think they're really cool. <laughs> it is positive seven. Very good. Um, and usually for pH units, you go to two decimal places. Okay, this would be seven point zero zero. Um, I could go into how to calculate or actually do significant figures for a logarithm calculation, but I'll let you guys, um, it, it'll be fine. Okay, so pH is this, 7, okay. Now, you can also, if you guys, did you guys know about pOH before? Yeah, yeah so that pOH is just the negative log base 10 of the concentration of hydroxide. So if you wanted to calculate the pOH, it's the exact same thing, okay. So this right here. Just note, just note that the pH plus the pOH equals 14, right? The pH plus the pOH equals 14. And a checkup question here is prove this using logarithmic properties. And 
KW. Okay. And I'm going to stop there. I have an example problem where we just calculate the pH multiple different times. Um, and then we go into weak acid based calculations. You guys should be able to do some of the homework problems. So just take a look at the homework this weekend and see if you can do them. If you don't recognize a word or something like that, just don't do it um, unless you want to work ahead. That's perfectly fine as well. Um, so yeah. And then I'll print out the worksheet, the what's your 3.3 worksheet. I'll print that out for you guys for Monday. And um, we'll work on that on Monday, okay? Yeah. I do not. I mean, I probably do. I just don't know how to find it. Sorry. Do you have a question? What's up? Um, guys, I want to share with you uh, the little trick just before we go on how to not use the qu quadratic equation um, so that we can use that, okay? I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's a uh, homework question in lecture 3.3 homework where this is, um, you might need to use this. If you take, if you take the initial concentration of whatever you're starting with, initial concentration of a reactant, Okay, and you divide it by the k value for whatever equation that you get. If that number is larger than 400, just 400, <laughs> if it's larger than 400, you can ignore the change in the concentration of the reactant. Okay, uh, this right here, how we are ignoring the change in the concentration of H2O is an application of this little trick. Okay. So if you're doing a, a question and you do an ice table and you're like, oh shoot, there's x squared on the top and there's two x's on the bottom, I don't want to do this. Okay. Take the initial concentration of the react one of the reactants, divide it by the k value. If it's bigger than 400, just it's bigger than 400, just delete the minus x's on the bottom of that k expression and move forward. It'll be a simple square root at the end and it'll not be the uh, determinant of the quadratic equation. Okay. So um, 400 is just the number that we as chemists chose, because um, <laughs> we do that sometimes. We just choose numbers to use um, for our things. Basically what this means is that the change of the initial concentration to the equilibrium concentration is negligible. And so if it's bigger than 400, you're good. Let me stop recording. So. Yeah, so you can just get rid of the minus x at the